This is the SAT MathWiz tutoring service. And right now we're looking at situations where you need to apply the fact that the three angles of any triangle always add up to 180. Here's a problem from College Board's 2012 practice test. In this figure, we've got all of those segments intersecting at P. R is equal to 90. S is 50. T is 60. U is 45. W is 50. Our goal is to find out what X is. Before we think of any ingenious way to get toward X, we want to take every bit of given information and go ahead and see what we can get out of that. I noticed one important thing about the SAT math section. There's actually not a lot of unnecessary given information given to you on this particular test. W and U add up to 95, but this entire triangle has to add up to 180. Therefore, P has to be 85, because 85 plus 50 plus 45 add up to 180. Similarly, S and T add up to 110, but these three angles have to add up to 180. So 110 plus 70 is going to be 180, so we know that this angle here is 70. If we have 45, 85 on one side, because of vertical angles we have 85 here, and if we have 70 on one side because of vertical angles, we have 70 right here. Now, one important thing is that we've got a straight angle right there. Therefore, the three angles that add up to that straight angle have to all add up to 180. So we've got 85, 70, and some other number that has to equal 180. So 85 plus 70 is 155. That means that this third angle here has to be 25 degrees. Now within this triangle, these three angles should add up to 180. So 90 plus 25 plus x has to equal 180. 90 plus 25 is 115. So that means that x has to be 65. Here's a problem from College Board's 2012 practice test. x equals 20. 20 degrees, y equals 30, what is the value of z? One important thing to notice about this problem, and it would be fairly easy to not notice this, is that we've got x here and x here. So even though I don't know the value of x, I know that there's sort of an isosceles type of dynamic going on there. If I were to imagine this triangle right here, I don't know a lot about that triangle, but I know that it's isosceles. It's got two base angles that are going to be congruent and two segments here that are going to be congruent. Now, within that triangle, let's see, we've got 20 here as well. Now, not within this triangle here, but within this outer triangle, I can see that that triangle should add up to 180. So let me go ahead and write that out. 30 plus 20 plus, I'll call this y right now, plus y plus the other y plus 20 all has to equal 180. Simplify that a little. 50 plus 2y plus 20 equals 180. Combine more like terms, 70 plus 2y equals 180. Take away 70 from both sides, 2y equals, 2y equals 110, divide by 2 on both sides, and y equals 55. So now we know that each of these angles are 55 degrees and we're trying to find the value of z. So if we're looking for z, now we can turn our attention to this triangle that I'm highlighting right now in green. And within that triangle, we can say 55 plus 55 plus z equals 180. 110 
plus z equals 180 after we combine like terms. Take away 110 from both sides and z equals 70. So therefore the correct answer is choice b. The z equals 70. Here's a problem from College Board's 2007 practice test. In the figure above, which of the following is the greatest? First things first, especially on any geometry problem, we want to take all the given info and figure out everything we can from it. 60 plus 70 equals 130. Therefore, to make this triangle equal 180, C has to be 50. Because 60 plus 70 plus 50 would equal 180. We've got a linear pair right here. These two angles should equal 180. So that, that means that D is equal to 130. We've got another linear pair right here. 70 and E have to add up to 180. So E is going to be equal to 110. And we've got a last linear pair right here. 60 and B have to add up to 180. So B is 120. The 60 degree angle and A, these are vertical angles. So I automatically know that A is equal to 60. Now I have all the information I need in order to determine which of these letters is the greatest. The biggest number in the whole diagram is 130, which is D. So therefore the greatest out of the different letters in the different choices would be D. Here's a problem from College Board's 2004 practice test. The three angles of a triangle have measures of x, 2x, and y. And of course this is not to scale. x has to be greater than 55. And it's an integer. Like I always say, pay extra attention to when you see the word integer. It turns a really tough problem into a manageable problem. What's one possible value of y? Well, x is an integer and it's greater than 55. So to keep things simple, we'll make it 56. If we do that, that means that 2x is 112. So what's a possible value of y? We just need to add the three of these together. 56, 56 plus 112 plus y equals 180. And go ahead and solve that. 168 plus y equals 180 after we combine our like terms. Take away 68 from both sides and y equals 12. So one possible value for y is 12. It's not the only one, but it's a possibility. And these questions tend to be challenging because they're so open-ended. Here's a problem from College Board's 2004 practice test. In the figure above, what is the value of x? Well, if I've got 55 right here, I need 55 right here because these are vertical angles. If I've got 75 here, then I've got 75 here because those are vertical angles. Now we have 55 plus 75 plus x equals 180, and we can just solve for our x. So we've got 130 plus x equals 180. Take away 130 from both sides, and x equals 50. So the correct answer here would be C. Here's a, a problem from College Board's 2002 practice test. In the figure above, what is the value of x? When I look at these two combined angles, the b and the a and the a and the b, I don't know what they are, but I know that they're equal to one another because each of those green angles is equal to a plus b. So part of me there. So the figure is definitely not to scale because this is an isosceles triangle. When I have two base angles that are congruent, that means that the two sides across from both of those base angles are also congruent. Now, in the bottom triangle, I can say 126 plus A plus B equals 180. When I take away 126 from both sides, that means that A plus B equals 54. 
When I turn my attention to the bigger outer triangle, I can write the sentence that adds up to 8, 180 there. I can say that x plus the, left, the lower left angle, b plus a, plus the lower right angle, b plus a, equals 180. Now, because I know that a plus b is 54, each of these sets here are both equal to 54. So x plus 54 plus 54 equals 180. Combine like terms, x plus 108 equals 180. Take away 108 from both sides, and x equals 72. So the correct answer for this problem would be A, 72. Here's a problem from College Board's 2002 practice test. In the figure above, the angle between N and P is twice as large as the angle between L and M. So what's the value of X? L and P are going to intersect right here. That angle is twice as large as the intersection of L and M. So if this gold angle here is twice the size of this purple angle here, that means that I can call the purple angle X, actually I won't use X because it's already in there, I'll call it Y, and if I call that one Y, the orange angle is twice the purple angle, so that means that this one is 2Y. We're looking for the value of x. So I'm just looking at my given information to see what I can do here. If I've got 90 right here, that means that I've got 90 on the other side because I have a linear pair. I have two angles whose sum should be 180. If I have 110 right here, I have another linear pair right there. So that means that the other side of that linear pair should be 70 degrees. So now 90 plus 90 equals 180, because that's a straight angle right there. And 110 plus 70 equals 180 as well. 90 plus 70 is 160. Now looking at this yellow triangle here, I can say that 90 plus 70 plus y has to be equal to 180. Therefore, y has to be 20. If y is 20, 2y has to be 40. So this angle here is 40 degrees. Now I can turn my attention to this turquoise colored triangle. So what we're looking at in this high level problem is a lot of overlapping triangles. In the turquoise triangle, I can say that x plus 90 plus 40 equals 180. From there I can solve for x. x plus 130 equals 180, combining like terms, take away 130 from both sides, and x equals 50. So the value of x is 50. This is the SAT MathWiz tutoring service, and I can tutor you one-on-one -on -one online. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment. All you need is a computer with an internet connection. You can email me at SATMathWiz, that's spelled W-H-I-Z, at gmail.com. I'd be glad to give you one free session so that you can find out uh, what it's like to have a Yale-educated SAT math specialist helping you to pursue your college dreams. I've helped lots of students get super high scores on the SAT. My success comes from the fact that this is all I do. SAT math is my number one focus. And I believe that when you're pursuing something as challenging as the SAT, the SAT math section, you need someone whose sole focus is this type of thing. So feel free to reach out to me. And thank you so much for your time and watching my video.